Once on me love, once on me patience, once on me pain. Now I'm so amazed. Hi, welcome to this reading vlog. I was going to get ready. I was gonna like do my hair. I was gonna do my makeup. I was gonna film this whole video thing. I woke up strangely early for me. Like I, I think I only got maybe like four or five hours of sleep. And so I'm a bit tired. I'm feeling a bit like lazy. I think that's gonna be on the back burner, but I did want to say hello to you first of all. And then also let you know the progress I'm making with several different books. First of all, I've already finished a book. It's Monday, by the way. I read No One Rides for Free by Judith Sonnet. I'm gonna say something crazy. Just stay with me for a second, okay? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I was expecting it to be like horrifying. Like in my head, like I'm gonna get through it. I'm just gonna power through it. I just finished reading it, just finished reading it. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> I'm surprised because I've seen people on like TikTok like talk about it and they're just like, I'm just so disturbed or whatever. Okay, no, 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 Tiffany, Tiffany, hear me out. It is disturbing. It's extremely disturbing. It's extremely depraved, but it's not unlike other extreme horror novels. Do you know what I mean? If you've read other extreme horror novels, the things in this book are kind of kind of tame. It's similar in its disturbing content as The Resurrectionist by Wrath James White, at least in terms of content, like in terms of it being fucked up. If anything, actually, the, the Resurrectionist might be more fucked up. There was only like one or two parts of the book where I was like, you know? Am I just like not like other girls? I expected it to be worse. Honestly, I'm also reading Playground, by Aaron Borogard. I'm not sure to pronounce his last name. That so far is more has me more fucked up than No One Rides for Free, to be honest, which I'm surprised about because I thought Playground was going to be more tame, but actually, so far, it is not tame. If, if you've if you've seen me yesterday, no probably about halfway through to three-fourths of the way through no one rides for free i was like what is the point of this <laughs> i was kind of like questioning by the time that we got to the end i was actually like okay cool i liked that i liked i liked the book i think i would give it four stars out of five surprisingly i expected to hate it honestly tiffany i expected to be so disgusted be so scandalized by it that i that i refused to even read a single more page but no it was really fun. I mean, Caitlin, no, no, that's the wrong word. It wasn't fun. It was not fun. It was a book I read and I didn't hate it. If, if anything, actually, I really enjoyed the ending. Um, although actually, what I will say, I think the ending could have been even more fucked up. <laughs> Is that crazy to say, Tiffany? That could be crazy to say, but I do genuinely think, and like, listen, if you've read the book and you know what I'm talking about, let me know. But I do think it could have been more fucked up. I think it could have been drawn out I think it could have been stretched. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, I would say if you're interested, check it out. Be aware of the triggers, okay? There's like forced incest. There's gore, obviously, and violence. Um, there's sexual assault. It's just gross. Also, there's necrophilia. Keep that in mind as well. I would say if you've read other extreme horror novels, I think you would probably find this to be about the same. As, as those. I'm also reading Playground, like I mentioned. I'm also reading All the Feels by Olivia Date, which is a reread and is not extreme horror at all. <laughs> it's honestly kind of been like eye bleach in a way. I've been reading it to sort of like pick up my spirits. Like after reading all these like fucked up, disgusting things, going back into this like fluffy, fat, fat girl actor romance thing, like it's everything. I only have like two hours left of the audiobook. I think I'm also going to pick up Tape Worman, which is another Judith sonnet book. And I'm going to finish Playground. And I don't, I don't remember what other books I had in mind to read. But either way, the point of this vlog is to be an extreme horror reading vlog. I asked my patrons which extreme horror novels they want to see me read. They chose out their favorite, so I'm going to I'm going to pick the most popular ones. Also, I'm also reading another book for my Patreon, or like a Patreon exclusive vlog that I'm doing. And it's a vlog where my cats chose my TBR and they chose like the most succinct TBR. Like, it's crazy. I don't want to say anything because I wanted to be surprised for the patrons, but I'm also reading that. I'm also doing that. I've got a lot of books on the go. She's a professional booktuber. Professional booktuber. 
She's not like other girls. She's not like other booktubers. She's different. Anyway, today I think I'm going to keep reading Playground. I think I'm also going to try to read maybe one other novella. But either way, I'm going to go. It was so good talking to you. I hope you're doing well. Um, stay gorgeous. I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Goodbye. This is Audible. Playground. Written by Aaron Beauregard. Narrated by Lila Carey. Warning. This book contains scenes and subject matter that are disgusting and disturbing. Easily offended people are not the intended audience. For those once youthful spirits that have now grown old and cracked, but still remember the carefree days when we took to the playground on a hot summer's day with our minds unshackled. When our innocent friends played beside us with beaming smiles as bright as the sun and the many problems of life weren't for us to deal with yet. For the days that felt like they would last forever. Additional warning. This book contains scenes of graphic violence involving children. Angry more eager to feel his tongue inside her. She pulls her moist panties down, allowing her fermented beaver to peek out from below. The scent was just as ungodly as the sight. Rock stared at the stretchy skin abound with wrinkles. The slick and sudsy sap leaking out from her floppy hole glistened in the daylight. When Geraldine got juicy, she manufactured a rancid odor all her own, one that made Rock sick to his stomach each time he encountered it. The fetid aroma floundered about, triggering a flashback to the many awful pastimes Rock had been forced into. The sourish scent stunk of outdated dairy, spoiled seafood, and asparagus-tainted urine. The monstrous melody that was Geraldine's cave brought Rock to his knees. Chemicals in those soaps and shampoos shorten the average lifespan. That's why you'll need to stay clean, and why I need to maintain my natural oils. Rock had watched Geraldine grow conspiratorial in her old age. It was like she sensed death looming, but her bottomless wealth could only extend her life so far. I look absolutely insane, so I'm going to avoid showing you my full visage, because I look really gross. It's Sunday. I'm going to start this reading vlog tomorrow. However, I'm reading Playground. I don't want to be ageist. Do you know what I mean? But the way that this man has described this older woman is repulsive to say the least like you heard it you heard i showed it to you you know what i'm talking about you heard it after that scene which i showed you which you listened to he also gave us another scene where she's masturbating so like that chapter ended and then immediately in the next chapter we got more i was excited for this book because i was really like okay it's not gonna have any sexual content because it's about fucking kids whatever no there's sexual content tiffany there is sexual content and it's from a woman who um canonically doesn't wash her vagina so or her labia so yeah that whole thing made me want to puke anyway i just wanted to like come on here and tell you that just wanted you to know just in case it wasn't clear um and then i'm i'm gonna keep reading and so far i'm not having fun so okay bye
Tuesday. I'm getting ready. I'm about to leave in probably about an hour or so. I'm going over to my friend's house because her mom is visiting and she wants to have like a little card night kind of thing. So I'm going over there. I kind of look today like I'm like in the 70s. Kind of look. <laughs> a little bit like a teenage boy living in the 70s. I don't know why that's what came to me, but it did. Is this okay? Can you hear me okay? I hope so. A lot of things have happened, okay? A lot of things. Um, number one, I finished rereading all the feels. It was everything I needed. I love that book so much. I haven't read another Olivia Dade that has like the same amount of like beauty in it. Like I do really like Olivia Dade's writing style, but none of her books have captivated, captivated me in the same way. And then I was like, okay, let me maybe try reading another book by Olivia Dade that I haven't read yet. I started reading Shipwrecked. I got probably like 30 pages in and I'm just like, I'm not into it. And I think honestly what it is, is that I really love a good slow burn romance. Shipwrecked is not a slow burn romance. And I think that's really what I'm craving. So on the romance front, that's where we are. And then, okay, in terms of extreme horror, last night I started Thigh Gap by Chandler Morris. And let me be real with you, okay? I really didn't think that I would ever read an, anything else by that man. I, I really, because I hated infamously uh, Dead Inside quite a lot. I had condemnation in my heart you know do i even know what that means i don't think i do <laughs> i saw thigh gap come up in like the search results when i was like looking up and going through extreme horror books and i was like should i include it so i did include it in the poll on the patreon and it was the second most popular pick playground and then thigh gap were the two most popular picks i was like fine i'll read thigh gap by channel morrison and i'm about 30 percent into the book uh it's only about 120 pages it's not a very long book or maybe it's 200 pages no i think it's 120 and it is <sighs> how do i say this i enjoy it <laughs> If you know just like just how much I hated Dead Inside. And then for me to come back around and be like, wait a minute, I think Chandler's on to something. Like that's fucking crazy. I know it sounds crazy. And like listen, again, I'm only 30% into it, but the way that he has personified the idea of diet culture of thinness and the dichotomy between thinness and fatness as a woman is crazy tiffany there are these like deep-seated deep-rooted things that in my head are one and part of being a woman growing up a girl and he has included them in this book and it's really it's a book about eating disorders first of all it's a book about beauty it honestly feels as if the book is a question of whether beauty is subjective or whether beauty is objective the main character who used to be fat as a child oh, and is now thin because of an eating disorder because she uh starved herself now she's thin now she's beautiful probably also 10 times more insecure than she was when she was fat. There are so many things about this book that are so near and dear to my heart, to me. Like as a fat person, these types of topics, these kinds of ideas fascinate the fuck out of me. I'm fascinated with the idea of thin privilege, pretty privilege, a fat phobia, et cetera, et cetera. I feel as though having come from a childhood of like extreme trauma, and specifically around weight, around beauty in, in conjunction with weight and having grown up and sort of like being able to look at that through like a different lens, I can now sort of view it with a subjectivity that I couldn't while I was living in it. Do you know what I mean? And so now as an adult who doesn't mind being fat, who kind of likes being fat, <laughs> I feel as though these kinds of books are interesting. I pegged Mr. Morrison, what, three years ago? Two years ago? How long ago was that whole thing? I pegged him back then and going forward as a misogynist, as somebody who hated women um, based on his book, just based on his book. That was the only thing. That was the only thing I was like, you hate women, cool, blah, blah, blah. And now... 
how, and now I kind of feel like he gets it. <laughs> Is this my YouTube apology to Chandler Morrison? <laughs> I don't know, Tiffany. I'm ex I'm excited to get I'm excited to continue reading. I'm excited to see what happens. I there's there's sort of like a sense that the main character in the book is going insane. Um because she keeps seeing things, keeps hearing things. And I'm like, you're either going insane or this is supernatural. And I'm kind of leaning towards insane. Excuse me, sir, can you please not? Okay, so I'm also reading that. And then and then Tiffany, tonight again I'm going to my friend's place for a little like card night or whatever. My other friend just finished this book called Peter Darling. Bro, it's it's a queer retelling of Peter Pan where Peter is grown up, goes back to Neverland, re-meets Hook and is like, oh my God, Hook is hot or whatever. And like, literally it's like a gay retelling of Peter Pan where Peter Pan and Hook get together. And I don't think I've ever needed anything more in my fucking life. More in my entire fucking life, I've never needed anything. I'm gonna start that as soon as I, as soon as I get a hold of it. My friend is lending me her copy and I cannot tell you how excited I am. So this is gonna be the weirdest reading for <laughs> Like we're going between like extreme horror <laughs> and like gay romance slash like fat girl romance. Um, and you know what? I'm not even mad. I kind of love it. It's like it kind of honestly rep like represents me and I feel like this channel like it's just weird and unhinged. <laughs> I talked yesterday about no one rides for free. After I finished filming that clip, I was like, was that comprehensible? Was that involved? And honestly, I was thinking about it. Why wasn't the book as bad as I thought it was going to be? I think there's multiple things. Okay. Number one, incest doesn't really bother me. <laughs> that sounds that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. Don't get me wrong. It's incest, disgusting. I don't support incest. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fucking weirdo, okay? But having grown up in the early 2000s, how do I put this? As a teenager, incest was like a thing, you know? Like it was like supernatural. People were like shipping the brothers. It was like, it was like part of like the whole, it was like part of the lore of that of that pop culture you know what i mean like it was such a it was such a thing also also can i just say anime the anime in the 2000s bro and manga in the 2000s incest was incest was huge you know it was big like i read and absolutely fucking loved vampire night if that tells you anything so for me incest i'm like okay whatever this is monday fucking morning the part where it was like a it was like forced that was fucking awful i wasn't that disturbed honestly the part that really fucked me up the most was the part with fucking what the fuck was her name brenda deborah i forget the old lady if you know you know that part honestly that was horrifying i felt awful for that lady but overall like i said yesterday it was a really good book and i did enjoy it and i would recommend it but again check the trigger warnings like be responsible for yourself take care of yourself don't be, don't be dumb. Oh, also, I have not read any more of Playground. <laughs> Honestly, that book grosses me out. And like the part where I'm at too is like the most sick thing I've ever, I've ever fucking heard. And I, I can't go back to it right now. I like literally can't. I thought about it. I was like, I should listen to it. And I was like, I can't, I literally can't. I'll go back to it eventually. I will. Maybe after Peter Darling and maybe after Thigh Gap. I'm reading so many books. Look at me. I'm literally um, a booktuber. <laughs> I'm going to go because I think I have to call my Uber soon. So I'm going to go. Um, it was good talking to you. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.
Hi, Tiffany. So I finished reading Peter Darling, which is the book that my friend lent me. I came home. I basically read three-fourths of it last night, and then I finished it um, ju like just now. I literally just finished like the last like 50 pages of the book. Tiffany. <laughs> Hi, bug. Bro, it's so... <laughs> It's so fucking, <laughs> it's so fucking pretty. It's just like the most beautiful story about like acceptance, self-love, like found family. I was like messaging my friend who lent it to me, just like crying in voice messages, <laughs> losing it. And honestly, I didn't expect to cry. Like it literally caught me off guard. Like. <laughs> There was like, there was like a letter from a certain character to another character and like that letter was just like, it was so fucking, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm literally gonna, I'm literally crying, screaming, throwing up, okay? Like, you know what something is like, you know that feeling when something is like so beautiful that you have to like cry because it's so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is so fucking unhinged. But do you know what I mean? But something is so profound. And pure. Oh my god. I literally don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me, Tiffany. I think it's just like the unconditional love. The like pure acceptance. Oh god. It just gets me. It just gets me, bro. Bro, it just gets me. I really love this so much. I would say five stars. You need to read this. <laughs> Timothy. God. I'm not a bitch, okay? I'm not a little bitch. My mom didn't raise no bitch. I don't fucking cry. Crying is for losers. <laughs> it was really good also very quick read literally read this physically in probably four hours or something like and also like really easy to read as well like it's written well the prose aren't too sort of like clunky you know what i mean like it's really it's it flows I'm gonna read their other book called Coffee Boy, which is a romance between like a trans boy and his boss. I'm really excited for that because I I'm obsessed with this author now. Um, Austin Chant. I don't know if they go by he him pronouns or they them pronouns. It was so beautiful, bro. It's like the kind of thing at the end where like you just like you're like reignited with a belief in love and hope. God, how sappy. In other news. I haven't read anything else from Thigh Gap. I haven't read anything else from Playground. Yesterday, um, I didn't really have time because I, I went to my friends and then came home and read this basically. And I'm about to actually go out for dinner. I probably won't read until later again tonight again. And I'm just like, I'm just like busy. I just have like plants. <laughs> my hair is crazy. Honestly, it's kind of greasy. I washed it yesterday. Um, and it actually doesn't look that bad because I also still want to read Tapeworm in. My goal, honestly, for this week, for this reading vlog, for you, is to finish Tapeworming, Thigh Gap. If I can finish Playground, chill, that's cool. If I can't, I'm not like that upset about it. I should also look at the poll on the Patreon just to make sure that there aren't any other books that were at, that had like really high votes for it. Because I know that a lot of them as well had like, were just like novellas. So they would probably take me like less than an hour to read. I want to finish Thigh Gap. I want to read Tapeworm. And I think I also might want to read like Maggie's Grave by David Sodergren. I haven't read any of his books before, but I've heard really, really good things. And I also kind of want to, I think honestly, maybe next week I might read The Forgotten Island. And oh, what was the other one I had? Uh, Night Shoot by him. Because I've heard really good things about his books, but I've never read any. But I do own a few of them. I know also that Maggie's Grave grave i think is on kindle unlimited i'm so sorry by the way also that you had to like literally see me sob <laughs> if you could pretend that like literally never happened if you could pretend like this whole thing i've just been like very calm composed and like cool i would love that tiffany please don't please please don't bring it up i don't want to talk about it okay i'm fine everything's fine once again i'm telling you tiffany you need to read this if you love queer 
romances and if you love like fantasy queer romances bro this is so good not only that actually can i also mention that the that the world building you would think like oh they're just gonna take the world building from the original peter pan no they like expand upon it it's like expanded upon it's explained it's literally gorgeous i love this so much five stars oh my god it's like basically perfect in my head anyway um i have to start getting ready my friend is gonna pick me up in about i think 40 minutes or so so i'm gonna get dressed and everything but um thank you so much <laughs> i don't know for what maybe for sitting here watching me <laughs> watching me lose it on camera okay we're not gonna talk about it we're not gonna talk about it tiffany we're not gonna talk about it okay it never happened it didn't fucking happen you didn't see anything <laughs> okay bye see you soon I went grocery shopping and I also happened to go to the bookstore with my friend. We went to a local bookstore and I bought a few things. I also wanted to update you on what I've been reading. Let's talk about the books that I got. I only got two because I'm a frugal girl. I don't like to spend money. <laughs> That's literally a fucking lie. I'm just poor. That's why I didn't buy as much. First things first, I got An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is the Patreon book club pick for march and we're actually gonna have st gibson on the patreon we're probably gonna have her on at the beginning of april if you're interested in seeing that check out the patreon we also had uh, a few months ago nat cassidy on and that was wonderful so i'm really really excited to talk to her about this i haven't read it yet but now i own a copy so i can talk about it and i can annotate it and it's gonna be so much fun this is basically like a gay vampire thing i think also it's a lot longer than her last book got this i'm very excited to read it and then i saw this and i was like i didn't know that it was out yet tiffany tiffany bro the moment i saw it 
I was like, I need that book. This is a short story collection, I'm pretty sure, from Hirokatsu Ihara. They're short stories by him. And then Junji Ito did the artwork. The tapping. For you ASMR girlies. Let me just show you like a little sneak peek, okay? Oh, look how stunning that is. Are you joking? Things like this. Look how pretty that is. I might read this for next week's reading vlog. Let me know if you want to know what my thoughts are on this and I'll, I'll get to reading it. I just want to spend the rest of my life just tapping this book. It just gives me so much joy. Anyway, here's the thing, Tiffany. I finished Thigh Gap by Chandler Morrison and I don't know. I don't know what to think, Tiffany. I liked the book. I really liked it actually. It's just, I feel a bit, I feel a bit dumb. I feel a bit dumb, I'm not gonna lie to you Tiffany. I feel a bit stupid, really. I'm under the assumption, the presumption, that in Dead Inside, the book Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison is making fun of like incel culture and like edgelord dudes. It was so convincing, and like, listen, it was so convincing, Tiffany, that I think I was, I think, I think, I think I, I thought that it was like a for real thing. I thought Chandler Morrison was jerking off to the idea of dead women and dead fetuses and shit. And I was like, that's fucked up, Mr. Morrison. Chill out, you know, but I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know if you know, because I don't know. <laughs> I feel as though. There's a chance, Tiffany, that I had him wrong, that I pegged him wrong. Um, so if anybody knows, let me know. But Thigh Gap, I really enjoyed. It was delirious, disturbed, and heartbreaking, honestly. It felt like an exploration into a world, into a place where nothing matters if you don't have beauty beauty it kind of honestly reminded me a little bit of only ever yours by louise o'neill which if you haven't read is basically like a dystopian novel where women are like literally bred um to be beautiful and that's it and that's all they're taught fatness is obsolete and that fat girls are no better than dead girls that kind of thing thigh gap felt a lot like that felt a lot like dystopian view of the world a girl only seen for her sex appeal and her sort of internalizing that like really really internalizing it taking it in transforming herself to be an image an object of sex to the point of delirium listen 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 it was gorgeous <laughs> Tiffany, it was gore. It was gorgeous. I don't know what to fucking tell you, dude. It was fucking stunning. And I am just as upset about it as you are. Maybe you're not upset, actually. You're, you're probably like, yeah, duh. But like in my head, I cannot fathom a world in which Chandler Morrison and I are not mortal enemies. Because in my head, I have built this amalgamation of a person. I have built Chandler Morrison up to this big bad wolf type. When you sort of hate someone for one thing, but then you kind of build that, that hatred by yourself without that other person's help. I'm gonna be expeditiously honest with you. I think, I think I, I think, okay, Tiffany, I think I owe. Oh. Chandler Morrison an apology because it's possible that I misunderstood the book but maybe I fucking didn't I don't fucking know dude because some people tell me that it's like literally fucking gross blah 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 but then other people tell me that like Chandler is it's like super cool super progressive super like feminist dude what do you mean what do you mean what do you mean let me know what you think <laughs> Thigh Gap was a beautiful exploration of the horror that is girlhood, the horror that is womanhood, the horror that is diet culture, fat phobia, and uh, thin privilege. Being a woman is fucking hell. Girlhood is hell. I will stand by that until the day that I fucking die. And then I read uh, Coffee Boy. If you're like, 
what the, what the fuck, Jordan Line? It's Coffee Boy, let me tell you. Coffee Boy is another book by Austin Chan. Now, you remember uh, yesterday when I was fucking sobbing? over Peter Darling. The same author, I picked up another one of their books. This one's called Coffee Boy. And bro, I am literally obsessed with it. Um, I'm also reading it to my patrons and to my friend. Basically, she lent me Peter Darling. I said, oh, they have this other book on Scribd. I'm not gonna get a Scribd or anything. You should just read it to me. And I was like, why would I do that? I'm like, why, why would I literally ever do that? And they were like, why wouldn't you? And so basically I was like, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> we're about halfway through the book. It's fucking wonderful, dude. It's beautiful. I just, I really love this author's point of view and I'm so upset that they only have three books. Three books, three, okay? Soon I'll be down two in literally like less than a week. How fucking annoying is that? Coffee Boy is really cute. And it's like a cute little trans bisexual romance and Bro, that's, like all I want to do is read just like the gayest books. Like all, <laughs> I want to read like extreme horror, fucked up shit, but then also just like the sweetest, cutest, fluffiest little fucking gay shit, romance type shit you could think of. Okay, that's all I want. I want I want the two sides of the story and that's it. Anyway, it's been almost 15 minutes of me talking your ear off, so I'm gonna go because I'm thirsty. So um, let me know about the Chandler thing, okay? <laughs> Bye, see you tomorrow. So happy Friday. It's about 4 p.m. right now. I just finished, I think what's gonna be the last book for this reading vlog. I just finished Tape Worman by Judith Sonnet. I learned a few things. Judith is, I think, trans. This vlog has been a lot of trans authors, two of them. <laughs> we love supporting trans authors, especially trans horror authors. What did I think of Tape Worman? It was a very quick read. It was like 50 pages and it was pretty fucking gross. If I'm being honest with you, Tiffany, it was pretty fucking gross. It wasn't like playground gross where it was so gross that I have not even tried to go back to it, but it was gross in the sense that there were worms coming out of orifices and that made me a little bit squeamish. But other than that, it wasn't that bad. Honestly, I really like Judith's work so far. They have a kind of writing style, a kind of horror, extreme horror writing style that I can get behind, which is kind of new for me, because usually extreme horror is not my thing. It's not my gig. Exploring Judith's work, even, if, even though it was just two books, it's been a lot of fun. I'm excited to check out more of her stuff. I would recommend that you read Tape Woman. It doesn't have any sexual assault. There is sexual content. It's all consensual. It's kind of gross. It's just like a little short gross thing. Money is being so cute. Look at him. Money. <laughs> My friend and I are gonna go get fondue today and I'm 
so excited. You probably already seen the B-roll for it. Also, I forgot to mention, oh my God, I almost, compl I almost forgot. I also finished Coffee Boy, <laughs> which is the other book by Austin Chant about a trans boy and and his bisexual boss. Oh my God. So like I was saying, I'm reading the audiobook for my patrons and then also for my friend. And so I finished it last night sending voice memos to my friend, you know, reading it to her. And what I didn't expect was there was for there to be a scene, a sex scene. Um, so I had to read my friend. <laughs> I had to read my friend the sex scene where the bisexual boss, spoiler alert, is a bottom. <laughs> bro the way the, the way that i was so happy i was like bro this man cannot get any sexier like and then you tell me that he's a fucking bottom bro, i'm gonna die i was dying i was dying like i could barely keep it together to read the actual book to her but i did somehow somehow i fucking did it was such a cute little book like is it revolutionary no is it like a marvel no is it better than Peter Darling? No. Peter Darling was literally fucking gorgeous. But it was still so much fucking fun. It was so cute. It was just a cute little romp. A cute little... It just... It feels almost, in hindsight, like, just as if you're just, like, taking a little slice out of somebody's life. And then, you know, you pick up where they are and then you just leave them at some point. I would recommend it. I would check out, if I were you, Judith Sonnet stuff and Austin Chan stuff. That's what we've learned in this vlog is to read those two people because like they're doing, they're just doing things. Also though, Austin, if you're watching this, my guy, where are, where, where are the books? Where are the books? My, my, my good, my good dude, where are they? Because you haven't released anything since like 2018, my guy, and it's not okay. You need to get back um, to your desk, to your computer. You need to be typing away, motherfucker. Because, <laughs> respectfully, the fucking losers like me, we need more. Okay, Austin, thank you so much. <laughs> Austin, please, if you're watching this, which I doubt you are, write more books. I I will read them. I will, I will promote them. I will literally, like, scream it from the fucking rooftops. I want more. Come on. Anyway, I'm going to get ready uh, for fondue. I'm going to end the vlog here. Thank you so fucking much for watching, Tiffany. It's been so much fun. It's been great seeing you like this. I've loved it. Every single moment of it. Wish we could do this more often. I will see you in next week's reading vlog, okay? Bye. See you later. Take care. Don't forget also to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, talk about creepy shit, talk about Peter Darling and tapeworming and shit. Bye. Have a good day. I love you. You look gorgeous. You're stunning. You're gorgeous and stunning and beautiful. Oh my God, I want to kiss you. Goodbye. Okay.